just me and my guitar Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here in a workshop on Mark's Aquatics. We're going to start on part two of this better tank. And um, we're going to make a light unit for it today. Now, I'm not sure if you looked at one of my other videos, I saw the other video, but down in Ikea, you can buy these little lights. And they're only 27 quid. And they come with one of these little hoods. Okay, which these screw up into and then they go over a little hydroponic system just like that and you can grow all your lettuce and do your different salad plants um, for, you, uh, for you to eat but they're amazing little grow lights for um, for our tanks as well they're gonna because they've been specially programmed with the light spectrums for um, for doing um, for growing the plants they're gonna work really well in our little tank for our better as well to keep all the plants and mosses growing in there they're quite they're quite bright but they've got a red spectrum in there as well they've been specially designed but what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a bracket now that comes up here and comes over the top so it spans over the top like that a good sort of 10 inches i reckon off of the tank you don't want things too close because then you're going to burn plants because these leds are quite strong guys okay people think the more light the quicker these things grow which isn't a, a case with a lot of these things um, when I was breeding coral a few years back a lot of people used to ask me saying oh my corals are all gone belly up they've bleached out they've done this they've done that and it was all down to the lighting because everyone thinks my god the sun's up in the sky blasting down on these coral reefs but you've got to think that the sun has got to penetrate through all that water first and it's obviously it loses its, its power the deeper it goes but these corals aren't that shallow and they will um, and you can bleach them and, and, and burn them quite easily and I've had that with a lot of people that used to buy coral off me many years back and uh, they were all saying that you know and um, so it's one of the things to watch out for it's like with these plants in here I've got those turned down if I put all these lights on through there I've got three AI soles from Aqua Illuminations running on that tank there and if I put them on 100%, I know for a fact it'd start wiping out half the plants because it's just too much light and you'd have to start playing around with less through the day and all that. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to use one of these IKEA lights, 27 quid. I'll just... Oh, you can see it there already. It's already in the frame. This little tank here that we made one. I'll just take this off a minute. And my little diver. But you can see I put one of those inside that lid where we made that lid. I'm unsure about that build. Pop back because that was a build that, that I made in here. I made all the lighting and everything, the whole lot, the tank, everything. It's all all made from acrylic and um, and working really well. And you can see the Anubius, the Java fern, the Java moss, some wazit hang in there. We've got some dwarf hair grass, graminifolia, baby's tears, a bit of um, rickia as well which is growing in the back there nicely now a couple of little bits of it died off but it's starting to come back but one of those lights is running that tank there and it's doing a grand job everything's thriving away the mosses are looking nice and thick they're not getting leggy which is always a good sign of good lighting so that's what we're going to do guys so I've got a nice big chunk of acrylic down on the floor here and I've got another piece of this it was, uh, I'll just adjust you on the camera a minute. Got a nice piece of this blue. I've got a couple of lights going on the side here today, guys. So uh, trying to give you a little bit more of a, a better view. But it's just quite a big chunk this is, but it's that... Do you remember when we built the tank first and we had the blue base on it? Well, this is the same. It's 10 mil, so we've got a good thickness there, but it's that nice blue stuff which we use. So that's going to look nice. It's going to match up with the... Um, but I'm going to have to rip this down a little bit. 
first of all. So I want to get a, just a little bit wider than than the light. So if I put the light on there like that across to my saw, and I can just bring that now level that. And really, I want about five mil. I would say five to six mil there. Lock that in place so we can stick that light onto the top. Just have to juggle things around. I really do need a bigger workshop, guys. I really do. Maybe one day. We get that up against the fence there. And what we're going to do then... I'm going to have to make that slightly wider. I've only got a very small angle on the saw here, so oh, hang about, I might be able to shift it over a bit. I think that's cleared it. Right, I'm going to pause it a minute, I'm just going to cut through this, and then I'm going to cut a strip off, but I'll save your ears listening to all that noise, and I'll get back to you in a second, okay? Okay guys, there you go, we've cut a nice little piece off there now. Uh, what I'm going to try and do with this one, I'll just get you back over to the tank a minute. There we go. Now we've got that standing up there like that. I'll just give this a little bit of blast of compressed air, blow all this stuff off. And me. That's better. You can't beat the old compressors, guys. And now that's going to go on there. That's going to be stuck to the side of there. Probably have to trim a little bit off. Where's my tape measure gone? Everything goes missing in this workshop. I've got ghosts in here, I swear it. Right, I found it. It was exactly where I'd left it, so I forgot. <laughs> okay, we got 21 inches there on that one. And my light. What do we got there? Just over 12, 12 and a half inches that long that light, which is perfect to uh, span that tank. But I want it to come around, I want it to be about this sort of height, I can go sideways. I want it to be about, I don't know, let me see. I want it to be about a foot off of there, so I can take a little trim of little piece off of there. And then we can have a piece of about 14 or 15 inches again going across this way so we can centralize that light up then in the middle and we can put a little brace across there like that just to strengthen it up in that corner like a little like a little gallows would be just to hold it up in place so i'll trim off another piece of that the same width That'll do. So we'll take another run straight off of there. Right, I've cut a couple of bits. Put another one like that. So we've got two identical lengths now, same width. I've just clamped that one piece to the side there. And I'm just going to lay that one across the tank like that. And then we got our little light and we can position that and centralise that on there now. Doesn't have to be spot on. You can give it a rough three and three quarters there. Look at that. That wasn't a bad bit of iron up there. But that's going to go on there central now. So now I've just got to find my little pen and just mark either side. where I want that to go 
and I can mark that in place now as I can see it underneath we could have a nice curve only a slight curve just around there like that I think I'll bring it back a bit there and I'll make a bigger curve across there like that just to round it off nicely which I can do on my spindle sander which is down on the floor so now we've got that bit done we've got that bit done that can be the brace bit for the we're going across here to strengthen it up so now I've got my line just on the uh, on the back in there that's the light that's going to be where I'm going to round it off and tidy it up and then this piece here we come to 45 degree angle on each side and make that brace that goes across so I'll shift all this stuff out of the way angle you guys down so you can see what I'm up to And all I need to do, I've just slid this on now, so I can get a nice straight cut. And where you can see that cut there, I'm just going to angle that up roughly with the end, and then we can just shape it up with a spindle sander later on. So I'm just going to wind this blade down. Fire up the old saw. that bit cut so now we've got that piece cut off which then we're going to angle so that now is going to be going from there to there it's not going to be I'm going to chop some of this down as well and then that little piece is going to come across there like that to strengthen him up once I get my angles on there as well so I want that to be a foot now from the top of there to there so I can pop that off of there and now I've just got to remove that little piece there which I'll ju just quickly whiz off okay I've got a nice little thick bit of acrylic there I can make some more key rings with that so all the other ones sold, thank you very much for, uh, for all you guys buying those key rings and fridge magnets. I do enjoy using that laser cutter and a bit of painting as well. And like I said before guys, it just chucks a bit, it just throws a little bit of money back into, um, into the hobby so I can buy more stuff to perform for more builds as well. Obviously I'm funding all this but it's my hobby, I appreciate that and I enjoy doing it. I've done it for years and... Um, I don't think I'll ever stop creating and building things, so. Right, where were we? Right, that's the round piece there. Right, I'm going to move this tank out of the way now. Give that a rough 90 degree bend there. Now where's that little mark that I put on the back? There it is there, that's where I wanted that to go. 
So now what I need to do is cut 45 degree angle now on each side of that. Right, all the bits are cut. Now I've put a 45 degree cut on the tips of those as well and on that as well there. So that will now fit together by doing that when you glue up acrylic like this guys you, you're creating more of a surface area so you get more glue in area and as you can see that fits lovely in that nice and tight and then our little brace will fit nice and snugly in there like so obviously I'm going to glue it up on something this is a bit spongy this so uh, Just to give you a quick idea now that little bit now is going to go across there like that and that's going to give that a real solid edge and the lights are very very light so this isn't going to bend at all because that's that's 10 mil acrylic that is that's very strong so that's not going to go anywhere so now what we've got to do is my favorite bit and peel all this stuff off and we've got a lovely blue color underneath here look at that magic stuff you can peel all these off. I'll just peel that one off for there for now. In fact, I'll just peel these back a little bit while we glue it up. But it's a lovely finish. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a light sand up on all these edges just to make sure they're nice and smooth and they'll stick together nicer and we'll get a better bond also it'll look a lot clearer as well it'll actually when it fuses together you won't see the that bond as much it'll tend to go quite transparent when it when it all dries so that'll look a lot better so I'll get those sanded up a minute with a bit of fine sandpaper I can use my other piece of acrylic and it's all covered so we're not going to have any hassle with that that little filter we made still running at the end of the bench I just left it run just to see how it was working and it's working brilliant so uh, now I'm just going to hold those level on there just like you're sharpening the chisel if you've ever sharpened a chisel get the angle hold it down and just take out those little saw marks and you'll slowly sand it away until you get a nice little smooth edge across there now one little tip i will tell you guys about acrylic is when you flame polish something okay if any of you are thinking oh I know what I'll do I'll shave that all off I'll sand it nice but it looks a little bit blurry still a bit scratched up I'll give it a quick flame polish and then stick it together that would be a bad move because what happens is once you flame polish something it makes it it, 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 it makes it go a, a real brittle it makes it really brittle and if you put any glue on there it'll go it'll crazy pave it it'll just crack it all over internally and it will completely ruin it so never flame polish any edge before you stick it together okay always leave it like it is sanded as smooth as you can because when you apply that little layer of acrylic on there or that capillary action glue we'll use for that that will then form that bond we can clamp it together and we'll get a, a really good seal that way okay so i'm just going to shut you off for a minute i'll sand all these edges up and then we'll get this all glued up well, I've just pushed you around the other way now. We've got, a, we've got these two lined up now. So we've got our little, our little square. And we lay that on there. And we make sure that that's perfectly 90 degrees, which it is. And then we can squirt in a little bit of the old glue. I'm going to use the RS pro for this one and 
and that's sucked right in there now. Chuck a little bit more in there and now we can leave that for a good 10 minutes and then we can put the other piece on after that's just tacked off a bit otherwise you try and put that in at the same time and it's just going to make it all it's going to move things around you're not going to get that um, a good bond like that it's a bit awkward trying to clamp these things together as well but as long as they're touching fairly tight together that's going to stick that no time at all and you can always add a little bit in later on okay I've got that little piece inside now and I'm just going to put some a little spot of glue on the corner and I can see that sucking its way right the way through there Same with the other side. Give it a light press together and then we can leave that then for a good for a good couple of hours. And that should do it. Squirt the stuff back into the pot that you've got left and then afterwards then we can just scrape up all the edges there okay guys it's been a couple of hours this has all gone off nice and solid and if you look on the computer screen there I've just been working out now I was going to stick this to it and I thought well, that's a bit silly in case I want to move it at any time so I've just worked out a little brace system which is going to clamp around there onto the side of the aquarium, imagine the side of the tanks thing about, easier to show you now that's gonna go across there like that sorry that way but what I'm gonna do is I've made two little sleeves that's gonna go around here like this and I'm gonna glue those to it so that then will slide down into them so if, if we want to take it apart at any time we can do that which is great so now I've just marked those out on there so I'll take you over to the uh, to the laser now and we'll cut them out Right, okay guys, I've cut these two bits out now. Laser's done a grand job. This is 10 mil and it's quite thick, so it took about four or five passes to go through. It only goes down a few mil each time. So what we've got to do is I've got to get that onto there now, just roughly. And we can glue one of these in place like that. And then our light then can just slide in like that we can take it off and on when we want to but before we do all that and glue those bits on I've got to clean all this up get all these edges off 
and we're going to flame polish all this. I've taken the extra bits of plastic off now on the outside. Just take off acrylic. When you cut it with a saw, it does get very, very sharp on the edges, and you can give yourself a nasty little cut with acrylic. So you've got to be careful and make sure you take those edges off. I'll tell you what, this stuff's going to make some pretty cool key rings as well, the offcuts so of this being a nice blue. Going to make some nice ones, that is. So look at that in the end there, we've just got a nice A-frame, like your roof. So now, these don't need touching because they've been laser cut, they're nice and shiny and ready to go anyway. Now we're going to give this a sounding up. I won't take you through all that. So I'm going to go off camera now. I'm going to sand all these edges up, get my block on there, like you've seen me do in other videos, and um, and clean them all up and polish them up, and then I'll get back to you when I've done all that. Okay, guys, it's all glued up. I'm giving it a bit of a flame polish here, but I've run out of gas, so. Um, I'm going to have to get some more gas. I'm going to up the gain from my normal little little um, butane lamp which I use here. I'm going to get a map gas torch which is a lot hotter heat and it melts this stuff a lot nicer and gives it a lot better finish. But I've had to do with that for now because they're not cheap to buy. I think they're about 100 quid, 100 pounds to buy. I think it's about 40 or 50 or well, up to 60 quid I think for a for the actual torch head itself. Now, we'll get one of those, but getting back to this now, what, what I've done, if you look now, we're all glued up. We've got a lovely 90 degree bend there, that's nice and strong there now, it's going to support that nice little light. That nice little light that we've got here. That's the type of light it is, let me just sort of try and get it up to the camera so you can see it. If you can make it a tale of any of that, that's the numbers and things on there. Maybe that's the serial number for it, I'm not sure. I'll try and find it for you. But there's a bit of info on that there. And they're amazing. Bang, bright lights, really good, really good spectrum. You can see how bright that is. And that's going to grow our plants lovely, like in the little tank which I showed you earlier next door. But what we're going to do now, I've just been on my spindle sander and I've made a nice little end piece to it as well just shaped up the end nice so we can get a nice little effect on the end there tidy it up a little bit now we've got to put this onto here now, i don't know if you're familiar with these but they are a twist a twist drill and if you look on there they're high speed and they've got like a drill bit first and as you go down if it's single focus You've got a thread on there as well, so as you drill through, you've got a pilot hole and then you'll have a thread at the same time. Now what I've got to do, is just centralise that up on there. Centralise him up, where I want it to go. Give that a press down on there. And then we'll have a little tiny dot on that acrylic, which is spot on there. So I can just give that another little scratch, just to put a cross on there where I want those drill holes to go. And now I've got to find my drill. Oh, there it is. I found it. Right, we've got the drill in there. Now, we don't want to drill fast through this because acrylic heats up and you won't get that thread. You'll just melt. You'll melt it through. So I'll get my little scrap piece of wood and then we can just drill through there 
nice and slow. Put it on a slower spit setting. And you'll see that drilling through slowly through there. And that's drilled through nicely. Now you probably won't see that through there now, but they've got a nice little a nice little thread in there now. So we can put those little screws back through. So I'll just do this one the other end. Here you go, I'll just turn off the shed lights, just turned off the tank lights to give you a little bit more of a, an idea of the power of those little lamps. Look at that, little IKEA lamps, you won't beat them. Really good little spectrum, 27 quid. Get yourself a bit of acrylic down, you can make yourself a nice little stand. Doesn't have to be on a made tank, you could also make your own little light unit to go over uh, any tank really, and any design you like. Well, I'll just put those tank lights on again. On they come. They are the fish are happy again. Now what I have done is put the um I'll just pan you around this way. Now I had the other tank, the other shrimp tank there with the um with those hybridized shrimp in. Now I've put them all back in the shrimp room because I'm gonna put the uh, the better tank here on that little space at the end there, which is gonna look quite nice next to the acrylic tanks. So we got all the acrylic tanks that I've made all together and um, so we can keep an eye on them and how things are progressing and that means I've still got the tank running down there with all the media cycling away in it still next to the pond and uh, but I've taken all the shrimp out acclimated them back into the other room taken all the plants out and everything else but I've left the filter running just so we can use that live media now to go into this new tank into the new bet the tank and we'll have a cycle filter so we can speed things up for you guys and we haven't got to wait weeks then for uh, for it to cycle through which is good because I can use some I can put the rest of that tank water in there to start it off and that's going to help bacterially colonize everything as well as that cycle media which is running all the way through the top there there's loads of that bio home media in there which is cycled through and that love that bite it's been in there for a few months now so I said, well, not sort of few, maybe a couple of, maybe a couple of months, two to three months, I'd say. So we should have a really good colony now of anaerobic bacteria growing in amongst that, which is going to be absolutely fantastic filtration for the uh, for this new tank. So that's the plan. So I've got to clear off this little space now here, move all this stuff out of the way, and um, and we'll get the tank in place, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in a minute. They're really meant for metal, high speed metal bits. If you're drilling through like a car body or something like that where you want to put a screw through or a thin piece of steel, they're really designed for that. But they do a fine job on these too. I got these from uh, China, I think they were. Only cheap, only a couple of pounds. Took about eight years to get here, but um, we got them in the end. I bought them for another project. A long time ago. So, right, so we got our two holes now through for our light. And obviously our light's gonna do then they're gonna draw the screws are gonna go in through through the base there. I'm gonna centralize that up now.
Right, we got that through there, we got that on there, we got the screws in. So I'm just gonna wind them up. Nice and tight in there, not too tight, you don't over tighten screws. And there you go. And now we've got our little lamp fixed on the top. Happy days. Look at that. Right now, I just started doing this before. When you get the cables, it's going to look all tacky, you see, it's all going to be flopping about. So if you just get super glue and you put little spots, run your hairdryer over it first up and down so you warm the acrylic up slightly and then you can just put a little tiny blobs straighten your cable out all the way down I'll show you now let's have some close-up work on this that'll be easier for you there you go Right, now you just go along, grab it a bit tight, give it a slow stretch through and you'll twist, take all those twists out, give it a couple of, couple of goes. And then I use the old Gorilla Glue. And I'm just going to put various little tiny blobs I'll just warm it up quick. Always give you glue a little always give you a little glue a warm up first. It'll work better if it's up to temperature, especially if these colder months. Uh, super glue will warm better. Or if you hold it in your hand for a while, keep it in your pocket for half an hour, yeah, and your body temperature will warm it up. If you've got air dryer, just do what I do and warm it up with that. And you'll find when you look in there now it's going to be a lot more runny and it'll work a lot better for you. And you don't want too much, you just want a little tiny dot. Do a few like that. Stretch that out. Put it on the dots. I'm minding the old fingers, just touch it down, keep going backwards and forwards like that pressing, and just hold it down for a few seconds. You can apply a bit of heat as well if you want to, that'll speed that curing time up. But as we know with the old super glue it doesn't take too long to uh, to go off and that's stuck to there already and you get a nice line then all the way down which will match your acrylic and you're not going to see anything flapping around or horrible cable ties that you see people sometimes putting around lights and I've done this sort of thing for many years and it's always worked out I've never had any worries about the stuff melting through the uh, the cable coating or anything like on that, on that nature so if you're worried about that now I can't go all the way down because we've got to fit it into our little sliders at the back I'll show you that in a minute I've glued those on I'll try and get them into frame there while I hold this down. Multitasking, look at that. There you go. I've got two of those on there. Now this now will slide down into those. I'll show you in a minute. Just it so you folks can see. There you are, that's better. That's better. Okay, you can see the two bits now I've glued on there two little arches going around 
and now our little light fixture that we've made now fits nice and snugly into there into that bottom one and there you go we've got a nice little bracket now that we can remove we just go off of it so you can see it there you go so now we've got the lamp over the top and we've got our little switch which is just underneath there and if I turn off the main shed lights we'll illuminate this guy there you are look at that now I've got a lovely setup now we've got a nice angle coming down obviously the central but if you put your hands in like that they've got quite a nice angle probably I'd, I'd say a good 45 degrees angle spread on those lights so now we've got a funky little light system on our tank all ready to go magic stuff and now we're getting more towards the fun bit which I like and that's getting the old scape in and everything else but at the moment we've got a nice little light nice little tank matching blue corresponding light unit at the top and it's looking quite good I can see a few blemishes on this tank a few little bubbles here and there which I'm gonna to have to polish out but apart from that for the old reclaimed tube it's not um, it's not too too bad There you go, I've just turned off the shed lights, just turned off the tank lights to give you a little bit more of a, an idea of the power of those little lamps. Look at that, little Ikea lamps, you won't beat them. Really good little spectrum, 27 quid. Get yourself a bit of acrylic there and you can make yourself a nice little stand. doesn't have to be on a made tank. You could also make your own little light unit to go over uh, any tank really, and any design you like. Well, I'll just put those tank lights on again. On they come. They are the fish are happy again. Now what I have done is put the um I'll just pan you around this way. Now I had the other tank, the other shrimp tank there with the um with those hybridized shrimp in. Now I've put them all back in the shrimp room because I'm gonna put the uh, the better tank here on that little space at the end there, which is gonna look quite nice next to the acrylic tanks. So we've got all the acrylic tanks that I've made all together and um, so we can keep an eye on them and how things are progressing and that means I've still got the tank running down there with all the media cycling away in it still next to the pond and uh, but I've taken all the shrimp out acclimated them back into the other room taken all the plants out and everything else but I've left the filter running just so we can use that live media now to go into this new tank into the new better tank and we'll have a cycle filter so we can speed things up for you guys and we haven't got to wait weeks then for uh, for it to cycle through which is good because I can use some I can put the rest of that tank water in there to start it off and that's going to help bacterially colonize everything as well as that cycle media which is running all the way through the top there there's loads of that bio home media in there which is cycled through and that'll have that but it's been in there for a few months now so I said, well, not sort of few, maybe a couple of maybe a couple of months, two to three months, I'd say. So we should have a really good colony now of anaerobic bacteria growing in amongst that, which is going to be absolutely fantastic filtration for the uh, for this new tank. So that's the plan. So I've got to clear off this little space now here, move all this stuff out of the way, and um, and we'll get the tank in place, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, I've got it all up on the bench, clean that side of the uh, of the workshop off. I've just put it on this piece of acrylic here, just for a minute, because I've got a very, very slight bow in the bench tank where all this weight is, and I never really thought I was gonna put anything heavy down this side, so I've gotta re, I've gotta put something else underneath and, um, and strengthen it up slightly. So that's just taking that very, very slight bow out. It's not too, it's not too bad, but it's enough maybe just to bend 
the tank a little bit there which we don't want we want to keep it dead dead flat i put a little bit of water in there as you can see we got no leaks anywhere but i'm just going to fill it up to the top quickly and we're going to give it a test fill first because we don't want anything to go mad and blow up and explode or anything silly like that which i doubt it will do but you can never be sure that's why if you ever buy a tank guys from anybody or anywhere first whether it's a foot square or an eight by two by two take it outside support it well first give it a test fill out on your deck or out on your drive somewhere level on some thick polystyrene because it's better off blowing up outside or cracking outside than in your house and ruining your house and your carpets and all your furniture and everything else so always do test first uh, tests first guys okay anyway we got some water in the base now we'll fill it right up to the top now or where I want it to go probably up to about maybe half an inch above there and um, we'll fill it up and we'll uh, see if there's any leaks okay Okay guys, there you go, it's all full up with water, we've got no leaks, lovely and dry all the way around. It looks like a mini swimming pool with that nice blue black bottom and the uh, <laughs> and this piece underneath as well. Just jump on there, put a little ladder on there, look at that, diving board, in you go. Crazy stuff, but that looks just the job that does. Got the light on, got another side lamp on here as well to illuminate it up. We're going to get a slight bit of frosting on this now because it's cold water inside so we're gonna get a slight bit of that condensation build up on the edges and around the sides but that looks fantastic so far really happy with that I think our little better is gonna be uh, over the moon with this little tank once we go and get one like I say I'm gonna take you all guys take all you guys with me shopping when we go and get one so we can choose what we're gonna put and who we're gonna put in there I do like the Dumbos I think they're beautiful with their long, big, long flowing fins. One of my favourite better species, so um, could be looking for one of those if there's any. If not, we've got lots of them online, which I've looked at, and we can uh, choose a nice one from there to go in here. I fancy I also might make another tank and get a nice female in there, so I can add a female in as and when, and we can have some little fry going in there and watch them breed and try and get some nice little baby and uh, some nice little baby betters coming out that'll be interesting I've done it before a few years back now and it's very interesting when they make all their little bubble nests and everything very interesting indeed anyway guys I hope you like part two of the um, of this better tank build now we've got a light system in there we've got everything up and up to speed we've got a filter made by in amongst everything that we're going to put in there so um we're going to build up some nice rock work around that filter and then hopefully we'll have a nice little cascade coming down not sure what i'm going to do yet but i'm going to raise the back up slightly i've got a few little ideas what i'm going to do but i'm really looking forward to aquascaping this one anyway guys thank you for watching part two great having you all on board We've got lots more subscribers on board as well, which is fantastic. So a big hello and welcome aboard to you guys as well. Drop me any messages if you want to know and learn anything about anything. If I can help you out, don't hesitate to ask me because I reply to everyone that uh, sends me comments. And if I do forget anybody, because as the channel is growing, I'm getting a lot more questions and sometimes some are slipping by, I feel. And I look back and I think, oh, I'm really sorry I didn't reply to that. So if I haven't replied to you, at least within the day, drop me that message again and I'll make sure I answer it, okay? Anyway guys, like I said, hope you enjoyed part two of the Better Tank build. I'm really enjoying building this one so far. Looks great so far. Super clear. And I think it's going to look great when it's all done. Anyway guys, as I always say, you're all stars. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Love you loads. And I'll see you on the next edition of Marks Aquatics. Be safe, take care and bye for now. Just me and my guitar.